Hello, everybody. I thought I'd go over this critical thinking exercise we're doing where we are analyzing and summarizing one of the arguments for from procon.org. And um, I've been getting some submissions and some of them are right on and some of them I think need a little more guidance. So I'm, I'm making this video to help you with that. Um, so uh, this is the first step of this assignment and we are looking for uh, a pair of opposed arguments at procon.org, uh, which I have on this tab, procon.org. And I want everyone to choose a topic that uh, deals with race, race relations in the U.S. or else income disparity. So those are going to be some topics that are covered in the book we're going to read. Uh, so you want to talk about race? Oops. And um, so uh, just try to keep that in mind because I think it will help generate ideas uh, for your future research project. As an example, I have chosen the um, homework topic, whether homework is good or bad. And so um, I'll just use that as my example. So on the first page of the homework argument, they have a picture of someone doing homework. And then they have an overview, like what the controversy is in assigning homework or having homework to do and why it might be perceived as good or bad. And underneath that are pros and cons, paired arguments. So for my uh, pro-con essay analysis and summary, I chose the first set. So what I do is, and I'm I'm suggesting that you start with the side you agree with because it might be easier to find the strengths. So I copy and paste this pro argument into um, the template, which is the template can be found um, here. If you just click this link, uh, it'll open up a template. And this is gonna be a little bit like a cooking show because I have it already done. And then here are some comments here that, about what I did. So. I copied and pasted the argument in that homework, this is the pro one argument, homework improves student achievement. So that's their main argument. They usually the first sentence or the first, the title is what they're going to be, what their argument is going to be. Um, so I highlighted in yellow who's, say, who's talking and saying what, and then I did the footnotes in red. And these footnotes are clickable, so you can click those and they will take you to the, um, the pro con footnote page and you'll be able to see where those are from. So that's just another way to, another tool to use when you are analyzing um, who who is speaking and how much credibility should we give them. Okay, so I've got the footnotes in here, which you might want to do, and then where they came from and what year. So just wanting to know how current the argument is. This is the worksheet. So it has these uh, one, two, three, four, five, six prompts, the question words. And then in these smaller boxes, these are sub prompts. These are questions I would like you to answer two or three of these in each of these boxes, just a little more depth, okay? Um, your who phrases, um, I'd like it for all of your written work to be written in your own words, so not a lot of copying and pasting. You do copy and paste this original argument, that's fine, and that's what you're going to work from, but then other writing should be your own words, okay? And that's what we're trying to improve is how you write. So try to um, tell who is speaking and do they have a title or degree? Mention that. Um, in this case, we have respected ind industry specialists and economic journal um, places they were, um, the publications where their opinions first appeared are respected and um, do, is, does what they're saying make sense in a logical form? Like, could homework be bad or how could it be bad? And this is arguing that homework is beneficial. So when is the dates? And just go through and answer these questions and then look at these sub prompts to add more depth to your answer, okay? And then um, you make notes based on what you read here in this box, the main points. So again, you are looking at uh, the main points that you highlighted here. If you can rewrite those in your own words down here, awesome. And then you're going to try to write a summary here and pare it down until um, until it uh, is only 25 words long, okay? And so it took me four, I think three or four tries. 
But if I select this and I uh, hit Command Shift C, it tells me there are exactly 25 words in this. So that's what we're looking for. And you can see the process I went through to reduce that. Okay. And then next week, we're going to do the opposite. But this week, let's just focus on uh, analyzing and summarizing using this form. And some of you uh, weren't sure um, if you're having questions about what I'm looking at for grading, there is a rubric at the bottom of the page and a rubric is just like a specification, a list of rules. And so there are three and 25 points in each area. And if you fill in all six response categories and you answer those sub prompts, two or three of the sub prompts for all of them, you'll get full points and it, it goes down from there. Uh, mechanics, I want you to have things um, written grammatically, capitalization should be good, um, punctuation, all of the things we're working at, working on at No Red Ink. Okay, and then the last one is how many words did you use in your summary? Exactly 25 words or less will get you full points. Uh, more than that, will you'll lose points rapidly. So uh, it's not easy to summarize an article in 25 words, but it is possible. So I'd like you to really try to do that and follow the rubric, follow the sub prompts, and then just think about what you're doing and give that a try. Um, I'll publish this and put it in Canvas so you can take a look at it and good luck. And if you have problems, let me know over the weekend. Maybe we could Zoom. I also have office hours on Monday from one to two. So uh, maybe we could meet then and go over how to do this. All right, so give it a try and see how you do. Um, and we'll pick it up from there.